how can we as developers leverage existing technology to build super valuable web applications. I got the idea to use AI to parse unstructured data into a JavaScript object just containing those values that you want to extract from whatever text you give it. And I think it turned out really well in this prototype I'm gonna show you in this video. The question is, is this technology reliable and can we actually use this to parse large amounts of data? Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are, and uh, this is the app that I want to show you. And if I start the server up, let's open Chrome and then go to localhost 3000, you can see a simple make rec button. And this is probably the most unuser friendly application ever, but what it allows you to do is something, something super cool. So you can pass it a text to parse, a little context if you want, but you don't have to pass that, and then which values you want to extract from that text. So in my case, there was pet breed and pet gender and pet energy level. I wanted to test out the viability of this um, for parsing unstructured data, in this case, from an animal shelter website where I got a bunch of animal texts. So if you wanted to build an application, for example, that matches owner properties to a certain animal to make it easier for people to adopt animals from an animal shelter, you would probably need some way to parse that unstructured data you get from the animal into an actual um, object that you can work with, so into numbers. So let's click on the make request and see what happens. It's gonna make a request with the animal text, and then it's gonna give me back the parsed data, the structured data from the text we sent over and extract all the properties that are in there. So for this pet specifically, we can see the pet breed was in the text that we gave it, the pet gender. Now these values were not found, so it didn't insert anything. Then the pet age is almost 12 years. And as we can see with this pet specifically, it wouldn't be child friendly. So you'd want to be really careful um, with your children and this pet. And then also the owner should have a lot of experience. And this is super cool because we can add these values as comments, right? It didn't just do that. It's literally, literally what we told it in a comment right here. So take, for example, the pet children friendly, right? We give it a default value of null, which it will stay if the value is not found in the unstructured data to parse. And then in the comment we state, how compatible with children is this pet? Rate this from one to five, where five means that the pet is very child-friendly and one means not at all child-friendly. So it will read the text and then determine how child-friendly um, this pet specifically is. And I think that is a super cool use case for AI. And just to demonstrate this, let's just go to a random Wikipedia article of like Albert Einstein or whatever. Let's grab some text from Albert Einstein and paste it as the text to parse. And now there shouldn't be any error. Great. Now the context, we can say the following text is scraped from Wikipedia and contains information about a person, in this case, Albert Einstein, but we don't want this to be too implementation specific, meaning we could pass any text of any person and that would still work. And now let's determine which values we want to extract from this. So we want to get rid of everything else. And let's say we want to extract the name. That's going to be a null value. Let's also say we want the age. That's going to be cool. And then let's also say field of study or field of um, activities, so this isn't too, you know, close to Albert Einstein specifically, and then as a value, we could pass null, there's a specific comment we can make, we could say, in which sector did this person work? That's the comment for it. And now let's try making that request with all that data in mind. Let's click the make request. And this is super cool. So apparently it didn't say the age, let's verify that. And it did say the age, but... Yeah, no, it, it probably just got that wrong. So it did say the age, that's kind of weird. Let's try making that a value of null and then comment in years. And that's a good suggestion. And then let's make that request again. And now it worked, great. So we needed to be a bit more specific there. By the way, this is a complete unprepared example. I just thought this idea was so cool and applicable to a lot of different fields. And so I just wanted to try it out with a random Wikipedia page. So we can see the name of the person, we can see the age and the field of activity, and we can do that with any person. Let's take, for example, LeBron James. 
an American basketball player. We can copy a bunch of text from here. We can paste in the text to parse from LeBron James, not change anything else. And we just want the name, the age and the field of activity and this specifying in which sector did this person work. Let's try that again. Let's click make request and see what happens. And this is super cool. We can see the name, the age and the field of activity. Um, and we could also say we want to rank this on a scale of one to five, right? So we could say how popular is this person on a scale of one to five and then programmatically work with that parse data uh, in anything that we want. So this is a super powerful tool in my opinion, in my opinion, to take any data that you want and turn it into something that you can wo then work with and um, programmatically uh, making machine learning models out of it, whatever. And after you saw what this does, and hopefully you like the idea as much as I do, let me quickly walk you through how this works, right? So on the front end, we just have a very simple button. The one you just saw making a request to this endpoint right here inside of Next.js. So essentially, this is just an API endpoint. You could do this in Express, in Ruby, in PHP. It doesn't matter. Just make a post request to this endpoint, passing the text we want to parse, the Wikipedia text, then the object we want to parse into. So what we specified right here at the top, that we want the name, the age, and the field of activity. And then lastly, we also want to pass the context if there is any. In our case, remember that was the following text is scraped from Wikipedia and contains information about the person. However, we probably wouldn't even have to pass that. We are just setting that as state, essentially meaning we are displaying it to the user. And let's quickly, very, very briefly, just go over what the API endpoint does. This is, by the way, a Next.js 13.2 endpoint with a new syntax. If you don't know what that is, it doesn't matter. We just make a post request to this endpoint right here, specify the type, and then extract the three values we passed from the front end right here. So we get the text to parse, what we want to parse into, and the context. And we want to make sure what these types are by using a schema, a so-called schema. So up here, we are defining what the text that is incoming in the request body should look like, or the object that is incoming, right? We are expecting a string that is of max 10,000 characters as the text to parse. The object that we want to parse into cannot be empty and it has to be an object. And then the context is optional. We don't have to pass it from the front end. So in here, we're just making sure we get those values. And then the comments that you could see on the page.tsx, what we provided up here, the comments, they are not passed inside of the object to the API, but they are below. So the API knows the normal value of this field, right? The API receives this right here. The API doesn't know about the comment inside of the object, but at the very bottom we say um, what the comment is, so it actually takes that into account and rates it. And the way we remove that comment is by doing a bit of logic. You can see the whole function up here. It's this entire block, but I summarize it up here for you. So we turn this object right here as name, value, and comment into this right here. So it's way simpler. The API knows what type it should be, which is normally null. And then the comment is passed at the very bottom of the request, stating or specifying um, what this value should be parsed to. And that's pretty much it. There's a bit of TypeScript involved. We are extracting the object from the string. And there are still a lot of console logs in here. As I said, this is just a very bare bones, but I wanted to get the idea out there. Um, meaning that ChatGPT, the entity we use to parse this text, sometimes it provides reasons for why it decided for this and for that. We don't want them. We just want to take the object from the response and that is it. We don't want anything else in there. And then we want to create the chat completion, meaning we want to use the chat GPT API to generate this with the all new GPT 3.5 Turbo, providing two messages inside of the chat window that chat GPT normally has, one being the system content, you know, the, the context, you're given a text and you should parse this, parse the text into the JavaScript object, try hard to match values from the text to all properties. And if you think a value is not available, insert null as the property. And if context was passed, then we insert it right here. And then secondly, the user content is just parse the following text into this format. And then we give it the text to parse and the requirements, essentially meaning the comments that we stripped out from the main object earlier. This is where we pass them. 
Then we create the completion using the ChatGPT API and pass that back to the user ideally. Obviously, we'll still do some error handling, but that's not of much importance here. That is how this works. So you can pass anything that is unstru unstructured and make it structured to work with it programmatically. I think this is super cool. Um, let me know what you think of this idea. I might turn this into an actual web thing, like a web app or an API or even both, if people like the idea. I think this is pretty cool. Let me know what you think. That was all I want to share. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.